The UN General Assembly kicked off a marathon week of diplomacy with a summit for the future. I called for this summit because our world is ebbing off the rails and we need tough decisions to get back on track. The signature event, adopted by consensus, a wide-ranging pact for the future, a blueprint aimed at ensuring that international institutions can deliver in a world that has changed dramatically since they were created in 1945. Russia, which raised numerous objections to elements of the pact as the months-long negotiations were wrapping up last week, sought to amend the document moments before its adoption but failed. The pact has lofty goals for eradicating poverty, ending hunger, and building peaceful and inclusive societies. It also seeks to bridge the digital divide. Now the hard work of implementing it begins. But our people know instinctively that this will only be talk unless there's a fundamental change in what we do and how we do it, and who is seen and heard in the corridors of decision making. The Secretary General met one-on-one -on -one with several world leaders Sunday, including Leslie Voltaire, a member of Haiti's Transitional Presidential Council. They discussed the need to ensure an elected government is in place by February 2026, as agreed by Haitian stakeholders, and to work together to boost international support for addressing gang violence and the dire humanitarian situation. The wars in Gaza, Ukraine and Sudan will be center stage this week. Millions of people have been displaced or made refugees from just these three conflicts, and humanitarian efforts to assist them are under strain. Humanitarians are not stretchable forever. We also have limitations, and I warn uh, decision makers, politicians, that unless they redouble efforts to put a peaceful end, or to negotiate ceasefires at least, uh, we are going to be in trouble. Grandi expressed concern about spillover from the Gaza war, most recently in Lebanon. He told VOA that an expansion of the conflict may have incalculable consequences. Margaret Bashir, VOA News, the United Nations.